Hi, my good students. I remember in our previous class, we had introduced as the elevation of our consolidation, and they gave you basic concepts on uh, what you must always tend to have at the back of your mind. In our session today, I want us to go straight to uh, a question for consolidation, and you'll see clearly that consolidation is always a very easy question to, or rather a problem to solve. So this is our question. It is from our model paper, which I'm sharing the question right now. If uh, you have not downloaded this model paper, just below this uh, video, we do have this paper again. You can download this paper so that uh, one, when we are working it out, we should always work it out together. So let's go straight to question number, this should be question number five of our block model paper. Should be question number five. Think, yeah. So, uh, looking at uh, this question, so we had uh, done a summary on our last class, but again, it's very important for us to look at it here again. So, at least we have a whole overview where I was uh, told part A, remember, I'd given you the solution to that. Part B of the question is that the following is an extract of the financial statements of A limited, B limited, and C limited for the year ended 30th September 2021. So in this case, uh, I'm given uh, these details and we'll be working it out as we proceed. So by the, by the time you are starting it out, you should just be through. So these are what we are told. I'm having our income statement and we're having our statement of financial position, okay? Then come to our additional information. In this case, you can be working out this additional information as we proceed. So number one, we are told that A limited acquired 40% of C on 1st January 2021 for 700 million, right? So I'm talking of acquisition of an, uh, this is what is an associate, right? Recall the percentage holding, which we talked about between 19, between 20 to 49%, this will be an associate. And you can clearly see in this question of ours, we are talking of a, a percentage uh, share of 40%. So that is an associate. And the cause that we use to acquire this associate is basically, 700 million. That is very important to note. Part two of the question is that A Limited acquired 80% of the ordinary shares of B Limited on 1st January 2022 at a cost of 34, at a cost of 3 million 430, or rather 3430 million. The fair value of NCI as of this date amounted to 800 million. So my good students, I learned to analyze that not too fast before we proceed. Mm -hmm. If you can check in note two, one thing that we need to identify is first of all, the date of acquisition, date of acquisition and aspect of us identifying the pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. So our financial year, we should identify when was our financial year starting and when was it ending. This will always be very easy for you to identify. Like in this case of ours, just by going through the question you're told that, uh, for the year ended at 30 September 2021. That is to say that our financial year was starting if it is ending on September, meaning that we are talking of October 1st all through to September, all through to September, 30th September. So we are having, of course, uh, this is uh, 2020 and 2021. So this is uh, when our financial year was. And we are told that we acquired this subsidiary, believing that you've already uh, downloaded uh, the question. When were we acquiring this subsidiary of ours? We were acquiring this subsidiary of ours on January. So January here. That is when you're acquiring this subsidiary. January 20, uh, this is basically 2021 and 2022, right? 2021, 2022. So basically you're acquiring this uh, subsidiary on Jan 2022, as per what I was given in our question there, right? See this question, we are analyzing note number two. We are analyzing note number two. So that is uh, when we acquire this subsidiary. So in this case, we can clearly identify our post acquisition and pre acquisition. So before acquisition, before acquisition, this is basically our pre-acquisition. This is our pre 
acquisition. Check it out. These are pre-acquisition. So my pre-acquisition period, basically, we are looking at how many months? My pre-acquisition, basically, we are looking at uh, pre-acquisition. Pre-acquisition. That is between October and January. And the rest here is what? From January to uh, September, this is a uh, post acquisition. Once we are able to identify this, this will guide us. This will be very, very important for us to have uh, and work it out. So we acquired on 1st January and the cost of acquisition, we are given how much? We acquired this subsidiary at how much cost of investment the cost of investment here cost of investment of our subsidiary how much were we given how much were we given we were given a figure of 34 30 i think so cost of investment we can clearly see we had 34 30 right we had 34 30 that was our cost of acquisition, cost of acquisition. This is very important to note. Then a good examiner here continues and tell us that at this point, the fair value of NCI as of this date amounted to 800 million. So this notes too, even before we go further, we can compute our goodwill, right? So that's the first thing that we need to do. We can compute our goodwill. Recall goodwill, recall goodwill, recall goodwill. We normally tend to talk of our cost of investment minus net assets on acquisition. Cost of investment minus net assets on acquisition. Minus net assets on acquisition. Right? Minus net assets on acquisition. So simply, what are we going to do? In the event that the examiner has not told you to use fair value, we'll always be using to, to use partial method, we'll always be using the fair value or full method. So in this case, computing our goodwill, I should be having this case, our goodwill computation. I'll be having this uh, component here. Recall, I'm having cost of investment if it is a full goodwill, cost of investment. We are going to talk of fair value of NCI fair value of NCI, just have the format the way it is. Then we less our net assets here. Recall when we started, I told you guys how to work out our net assets, where we'll be considering the items in our subsidiary only, which will include our ordinary shares, which will include our ordinary shares, which will also include our share premiums, Talk about aspect of uh, revaluation adjustments. Revaluation adjustments. Talk about aspect to do with uh, pre-acquisition profits. Pre-acquisition profits. This is what Molimu had mentioned earlier on. We are not using cost of control. I know majority of you are used to cost of control. Right, but this shortcut will enable you basically to prepare what to have your goodwill. So that has at the end of the day, this is a format that will always be in place at any given point in time. Okay, for you to compute your goodwill, cost of investment, fair value of NCI, then you less net assets. For net assets, consider the item of equity in your SAP. This basically your of subsidiary on the side of the subsidiary. So that after we deducted all that, that should give us what our goodwill. That should give us our goodwill. So let us jump to the question and see what we'll be having. At this point, we should be talking of the following. That is our cost of investment. We have in 3430. What about NCI? Fair value of NCI. Were we given fair value of NCI? Fair value of NCI. Check it out if we are given. So basically, these are what we have. Note two, A Limited acquired 80% of the ordinary shares of B on 1st January at a cost of 34 
the fair value of NCI as a this date amounted to 800 million. Now, another concept that again, I'll want to put it on uh, your radar is when you are having the fair value, I'll always advise that rush to your SFP and check if your subsidiary had other components of investments which will be required to consider in our fair value. So go to your SFP, look at our investments and identify if at all I'll be having an item of investments in subsidiary. That is one way that you can work it out. So other way you can leave it. And uh, again, in your SFP, of course, and other areas we'll consider it. But I'll always advise that we work it out here. So fair value of NCI, I'm having 800. But in our subsidiary, we have other investment of 50, which will affect us directly. You see this one, that will affect us directly. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to take our fair value of NCI, which is 800. We are going to add that 50. So that as at the end of the day, we can talk of how much? 850 there. That will give us a summation of how much? That will give us a summation of how much? Uh-huh. That will give us a summation of 3430 plus 850 to give us 4280. To give us 4280. So I'll be having my 4280 here. I'll be having my 4280 at that point. We deduct our ordinary or rather the component of equity in our component of equity in our subsidiary, which again, you'll find that it will just be a matter of us copying and pasting. It will be just a matter of us copying and pasting, which I'll come to our equity under subsidiary. Recall B was our subsidiary. So I'll come to equity under subsidiary and take these items of ordinary shares, share premium, which I'll be having how much for subsidiary? We having 1600, right? We having 1600 there. We having share premium. That is a share premium. I'm having 300. Revaluation adjustment. What were we given as revaluation adjustment? Do we have any? Let us see if we had any. Look at note three. The fair value of B limited property, plant, and equipment on the date of acquisition was to 10 million above the book value with exactly five years remaining on the useful life of this property. So I'm having the fair value adjustment, which is what? 210. So as at the end of the day, I'll have to consider that because that was uh, before we acquired, that was on acquisition date or before acquisition. So I'm having 210. My good story is all about pre-acquisition profit. By now, I know Molimo uh, has already explained the aspect of our post and pre-acquisition profit, where I want to look at the profit of the subsidiary that we're acquiring before acquisition, pre-acquisition. And I think Molimo has stated it here clearly, pre-acquisition. So how will we determine our pre-acquisition profit? In that case, you just need to be an open-minded student. And ask yourself this question. What was the profit that I had before we acquired this company? Many a times you'll be given the total profit since we started. So just have your total profit since you started the period. Deduct the profit that you earned during that period of acquisition. Having that case, that will give us what? Our pre-acquisition profit. Like say, for example, in our question here, let us identify the total profit that this subsidiary had all through. The total profit that the subsidiary had, if you can come in our retained earnings, look at retained profit. Retained profit for subsidiary, retained profit for subsidiary, we had a total of 3604. That was the total, 3604, right? This was 3604. 3604. We less. What was our post-acquisition? After acquisition, how much did we generate? How much did we generate after acquisition? 
the amount that we generated after acquisition or for the whole year, that year 2021-2022, we come and check profit for the year. In our income statement, I'm having profit for the year 2152, right? So 2152, that was for the whole year. But when did we acquire this subsidiary? We acquired it on 1st January. So after acquisition, we are talking of only how many months? Nine months. We are talking of nine months only. We are talking of nine months only. So basically, my pre-acquisition profit, and you always remind Mwalimu on that as we continue, we should be having a figure of 3604 minus 2152 times 9 over 12. This will give us a figure of how much? 1990. This will give us a figure of 1990. So what will be our goodwill? I'll just deduct all these from, I'll just deduct all these from our cost of investment and the fair value. Remember, you're using full method. This will be simple. Molimu will take his calculator and work it out. 1600 plus 300 plus 210 plus 1990, 4100. In this case, I'm going to have uh, 4100. We are talking of, uh, of course, uh, 4280 minus 4100 to give me 180. So very confidently, I can come and say that my good here is 180. Very confidently, I can come and say here that my goodwill is 180. Our goodwill is 180. Our goodwill is 180. Full. Full method. Full method. Full method. Our goodwill is 180. Our goodwill is 180. So, you'll also find that another person here at this point, you could have uh, taken it in this manner. We could have uh, worked out for NCI separate. And also, we could have a work out for uh, 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 for parent separate. You'll find that this person maybe in this case you could have work, work it out separately. You could have work it out separate. So these are what we should be having our goodwill, which ideally I'm getting that figure of ours there. The other question is, did you have any impairment? That's a question that you should ask yourself. Try identify if you had any impairment so that we determine it just at once. In our question, do you have any place where you had the impairment of goodwill? Uh huh. Jump straight to question number note six. Goodwill was impaired as follows: B, which is our subsidiary, twenty five percent, and C, which is our associate, ten percent. So for Subsidiary, I'm having 25% times 180. So basically, this should give us a total of how much? 0.25 times 180. That should give us 45. So basically, this should give us what? 45. 45, that is our impairment loss. That is our impairment loss. The share of the parent, of course, you can determine it. And the share of uh, 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 NCI, you can also determine it up to that point. Okay? So, I think we have analyzed note number two. Note number three, we've also analyzed it partly. So, uh, basically, in this case, uh, if we check this note number six, I was also having an impairment of goodwill for associate. So I think it is appropriate that we do also compute the goodwill in associate. How will that be? One will ask Molimu, how will you compute goodwill in associate? The component of computation of goodwill is always very simple, even without you using cost of control. Because I know majority of you are used to cost of control. And yet there are so many easier way that you can always tend to work it out even without using what? even without using, of course, a uh, cost of control. So basically, these are what you should be having. Just a moment here. So you need to work out goodwill in associate. Goodwill in associate. Goodwill in associate. Goodwill in associate. 
The same thing will apply. Look at the cost of investment in associate. If at all we had cost of investment in associate, cost of investment in associate, you less net assets. Net asset that would be simple. Again, we consider these elements of ours exactly the way they are. I'm having ordinary shares. You're having share premium if at all we'd be having. And the other item here is a uh, pre-acquisition, pre-acquisition profit. The same thing, the same, same thing, the same, same thing, without even using cost of control. So what was our cost of investment in associate? Let us see what we have. What was our cost of investment in associate? Cost of investment in associate, you can clearly see here, I was given a figure of how much. We invested 700 in our associate, right? <clears throat> so I'm having 700 here. Ordinary shares in associate go straight to our ordinary shares in associate. Of course, we check our equity in associate. Ordinary shares, we had 400. So basically that will be 400 by the share of the parent, which are given 40%. Right? Basically that should give us how much there. Uh, 400 by 80, 400 by 40% to give us 160. We didn't have share premium. What about post acquisition profit? When were we acquiring our associate? You can clearly see that our associate, we are acquiring it on 1st October. That is, of course, when our financial year was starting. So simply here, try identify if you had any brought forward. Profit brought forward. Retain profit brought forward. I was given a figure of 1250 for associate. See this one? Retain profit brought forward. I was given a figure of 1250 for associate. So I'll be having 1250 here. I'll be having uh, 1250 times 40%. That should give us how much? 1250 by 40%. I'm having 500. So having a 500, we can clearly come and say that my goodwill in associate, we should be talking of 700 minus 160 minus 500. That I can clearly see is what? 40. These are goodwill in associate. So once we have that, my good students, what would be our impairment? What would be our impairment? Impairment, I should be talking of 40% times, or rather 40 times 10%, what I was given there to give us 44. So already I've computed both our goodwill and what? I've computed uh, for this case, what we've done, we've computed, of course, our goodwill in associate plus the impairment, both impairment in associate and impairment in subsidiary. Remember, you are analyzing as you're going through the notes because you'll find that for a consolidation, many a times there are some entries which will just be given directly or rather which will just be direct entries. So after that case, we proceed to this other bit. So we are done with notes number two and six. Note three, the fair value of the property, plant, and equipment of the, on the date of acquisition of 210 above the book value are exactly five years remaining. So it as if the recorded uh, books, the recorded value in our books was low. So that's why we're having this excess. And that is also to mean that depreciation that we charge in our books was somehow low. So allow to adjust it to the depreciation of this item, which we had not yet consider it. So we had our depreciation under charge, which would be how much? To 10 divided by five remaining useful life for the whole year. But again, you have to factor in the period that we were the period that we acquire this subsidiary. Note four, during the year ended 30 September 2022, B Limited sold goods to A Limited for 140. So you're having intercompany sales of 140. B Limited marked up the goods at 16 and two third percent on cost. Half of the goods remain in the stock of A Limited as of the year end. So basically, my good students at that point, what you should have in mind is the component to do with unrealized profit. So clearly here and quickly, 
we can compute our UPS on closing inventory. UPS on sales of uh, goods. So remember, UPS is all about aspect of us determining the profit on the inventory item store. We normally also tend to talk of and realize profit on fixed asset, UPFA, right? And realize profit on fixed assets, which we cover that one, I believe. So our unrealized profit, first of all, I need to identify our inventory items that were still in place from the intercompany sales. The inventory items that were still in place from the intercompany sales, our good examiner has told us that it was a half of one foot, which ideally here is 70. And our good examiner here has also given us a markup of 16 and two third percent, which ideally this one translates to 16 point if we can work it out that is a 16 point what uh 16 of two of three so that is roughly like a 16 point uh six 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 seven percent so basically this is our markup but we had our sales we had our sales of 140 so markup and sales can't go hand in hand so I need to convert my markup to our margin. And that is to say my margin would be 16.6667. We add our numerator to our denominator because this is percentage. It's as if I'd be talking of 100 plus 16.6667. So ideally, that is to say we are talking of 16 of 116. So 116 times 70 which will give us our UPS to be how much here, my good students. I should be talking of 16.6667 uh, divided by 116.6667 times point times 70, sorry, which will give us 10. So my UPS in this case, clearly you can see is what is 10, you're having 10 there, which you're going to take the 10 value that I'm having there. After you have determined our unrealized profit on a closing inventory, what next? Intercompany sales, of course, I'm given there, right? So uh, looking at this bit, what next are we given here? As of 30th September 2022, a limited order, B limited 80 and C limited odd A limited 15 million. Ideally, the, those are in the company balances, which will affect us in our SFP. By that required here, we are asked to prepare the following financial statements in the books of A limited for the year ended 30 September 2022. Consolidated statement of comprehensive income, statement of changes in equity and statement of financial position. No task there. Whatever has remained is that for us to copy and paste. Mark these figures for me kindly. Mark these figures for me so that we can start copying and pasting. And the good thing that uh, you should always tend to have in mind is always note that uh, at any given point in time, my good students, when I'm preparing either income statement or SFP, whatever that you should always be adding on a line by line basis is simply the subsidiary items, subsidiary uh, uh, that we've acquired items and the parent company items. Associate will only be taking investment in associates. Aspects of joint will only be taking our items of joint. That is very, uh, or rather investment in joint venture. These are some of the main items that if you're having them at the back of your mind, you'll find that consolidation will always be very, very simple. So in this case, we've uh, worked out all these items, which I believe we've marked it out. Still, I'm going to mark it out somewhere so that uh, when you work it out, you should not forget. Impairment loss, I'm having four. We having the other one that we, that was a 45 for the whole. I'm having UPS 10. What about this adjustment goodwill? Uh, not goodwill, but uh, our item uh, depreciation. Depreciation adjustment. Because we are told this item, it was excess of 210. It was excess of 210, right? and the remaining period was five years. So basically that should give us like to 10 divided by five. Forty-two. 
for the whole year. This was for the whole year. <coughs> 42 was for the whole year. 42 was for the whole year. 42. This is deep. This is UPS. This is goodwill uh, impairment. Goodwill impairment. So now, once we have that in mind, I think we can now erase and prepare what you are given. Such questions, and the good thing with the consolidation, they are always the same thing, actually. The interpretation is always the same. Interpretation is always the same, right? So allow us to work it out quickly and see how easy it will be. Some of the entries, of course, will always be given direct. Some of the entries will always be given direct. So we're talking of uh, A income, or rather A consolidated, A limited, consolidated, income statement, for the year ended, Thirty first or rather thirtieth September thirtieth September twenty twenty two. Yeah. Our figures you're given in millions, right? We start copying and pasting. We start copying and pasting. So long as you know how to work it out and how I'll always advise. Just go and copy and paste your revenue, uh, or rather your income statement, without figures, first of all. So this is what you're going to have. This is ideally for the purpose of exams only. So you come to your income statement. Even if you know nothing, just copy paste your income statement the way it is, without figures, first of all. So some entries will just be direct, or so some entries will just be direct. So these are what you should be having here. I'm having, of course, our revenue. So I'm just copy pasting it the way it is directly. We're having our revenue. We're having our cost of sales. We're having our gross profit. We're having our distribution cost. We're having, of course, our administrative expenses. We're having, of course, our finance cost. We're having profit before tax. And you're having our income tax expense income tax expense income tax expense basically what you're having there right so you just copy paste it the way it is directly once you have done like that these are what you're supposed to do so basically that is what you're having right so in this case these are where again you should always recall your format of income statement in consolidation. And that's why Malimu will always insist on the formats. Once you have the format, you can always tend to have your format. Then all of these other things will just be copying and pasting. So looking at our format, I know very well that after that, I should be having what? Our share of profit in associate. Share of profit in associate. I should also be talking of share of profit in joint venture, if at all we'll be having any, then come and deduct our impairment loss. Then after we've deducted your impairment loss, my good students here, you can determine what? You can determine uh, your NCI share of profit. This is simply our post acquisition. So that as at the end of the day, we can come and have what our profit for the year. Talk about uh, profit for the year. 
these are what you should always be having in mind. And you'll find that consolidation will just be as easy as that. A matter of us copying and pasting our figures, right? Starting with our revenue. Revenue, always know that we are talking of what? Number one, we add on a line-by-line -line basis items of parent and subsidiary. You adjust with intercompany sales, okay? So let me share this question so that we work it out together and see what we'll be having. Let us start copying and pasting our revenue. What do we have? Our revenue, I'm having 9120. Our revenue, we're having 9120 there, right? We're having 9120 plus. So we are talking of uh, 91. Twenty. We are going to add forty-nine, forty. But remember, the subsidiary was not there for the whole period. We acquired it after the nine after nine months, so nine over twelve. Then, after we've added all these, we'll be required to deduct what intercompany sales, which ideally we had somewhere here around forty. So what will we be having? That will be simple because I'll be talking of 9120 plus 4940 times 9 over 12 minus 140. That should give me 12865. Can you confirm if you're getting that? 12685. 12685. What about our cost of sales? The same case, we copy and paste on a line-by-line -line basis where we should be having, where we should be having, of course, that is a cost of sales. I'm having 3610. We add 1092, apportioning 9 over 12. With less intercompany sales, then you also be required to less UPS or rather to add UPS. You add and realize profit, which and realize profit you are determining here to be 10. Then we add any depreciation undercharge. If it is overcharge, we are supposed to deduct. In our case, you can see we had depreciation undercharge. Why? Because this item was in excess. In excess of 210, which you computed depreciation to be 42 for the whole year. But when were we acquiring this company? We were acquiring the company on 1st January, so we'll have to apportion that. 42, recall what we are determining here, 42 times 9 over 12 to give us a figure of 31.5. So plus 31.5. A matter of copying and testing. Where in that case, that should give us a figure of how much here? 3610 plus 1092 by 9 over 12 minus 140 plus 10 plus 31.5. I'm getting 43 party 0.5. 43 party 0.5. Can you confirm? So that our gross profit here, we can have our gross profit to be 12,685 minus answer to give us 83,54.4. Can you confirm gross profit? 83,54.5. 83,54.5. Consider our expenses here. We add on a line by line basis, a matter of just copying and pasting. That's a good thing. That's a good thing with consolidation. We are copying and pasting. So, admin expense, first of all, uh, I'll work it out before we compute. At distribution cost, we are talking of 665. 665 plus what? Plus 428 times 9 over 12. Admin expenses, 695 plus 170 
by 9 over 12. I'm just taking the area of the year. 65 finance cost plus 20 by 9 over 12. Guys, I believe you are together. I believe you are on the same, same page. I believe you are on the same, same page because our task here is just a matter of copying and pasting. We should be talking of how much? 665 plus uh, 428 times 9 over 12. That should give me 986 here. 695 plus 695. 695 plus uh, 170 by 9 over 12. This should give us a figure of 82.5. 65 plus 20 by 9 over 12, 80. So remember this one we need to deduct so that as at the end of the day, my profit before tax, I should be talking of 80 plus 82.5 plus 986. 83, 54.5 minus answer. To give me 64.66 kindly you can confirm i'm having a 64.66 64.66 what about our income tax expense copying and pasting the figure that you are given there which in this case i'll be having 16.60 Plus, uh, of course, how much? 1660 plus uh, 1078 by 9 over 12. That should give us how much here? 1660 plus 1078 by 9 over 12 to give us a figure of 24.68.4. 24.68.5. So that is an income tax which you need to, de to deduct. So basically, that should give us 64.66 minus answer. I should be having a 3997.5. Three nine nine seven point five. Right, I believe that we are all on the same page. Okay, so after that, we need to identify our profit in associate share of profit in associate because clearly we saw that we had our profit in associate in this question. We had an associate. We had an associate in this case. We had an associate, a figure of how much? Our associate, recall, just check it out from our income statement. Our associate. Profit for the period. Associate, we had 1888. Look at that case, 1,888,000. So in a CPA, we are having share of profit in associate, 1888 by the percentage of the parent, which is 40%. So that should give us how much? 1888 by 40% to give us a figure of 755.2. Joint, we didn't have joint. Impairment loss, what were we having as an impairment loss? Impairment loss that will be simple because you had already computed it there, right? Where general total already still is not uh, kind of, uh, we've not yet erased it. Not yet erased it. That's a good thing. Uh, we're still here. You see our impairment loss, we had a figure of how much here for the other one. Oh, the other one we had, uh, we had written it here. We had 45. 
recall how we computed uh, recall how we computed our impairment right we had 45 so 45 what was the share of the parent 45 times uh 80 percent our acquisition we had already computed that one 45 by 80 to give us 36 so i'll be having 36 here in subsidiary plus the one in associate which was four so i'm having here 36 plus the one in associate see this one four right so that as of the end of the day what will we be having as of the end of the day i should be having 40 here right that is impairment loss which you need to deduct what about the nci share of profit basically we are talking of pre post acquisition now post acquisition because we call as at the end of the day all these items see we are talking of what you are we are adding subsidiary and subsidiary we are not the only person owning this subsidiary but rather we had a percentage of nci so for us to determine our own profit allow to deduct the profit of nci that's the essence of us deducting the nci profit which post acquisition profit for nci what will you be having here what will you be having here post acquisition profit of nci already we can see pre-acquisition profit or rather how, to, how will you determine the post acquisition after we have acquired what did this company fully or wholly generate so this will be simple you come here we take profit for the year profit for the year that we generated was 21.52 that was for the whole year but when did you acquire it we acquired this one only for nine months right so we adjust with ups which will have to uh of course deduct it here the ups first of all take the whole amount which you had 10. there's also a depreciation which was uh affected in uh, the books of uh, the subsidiary and that depreciation after acquisition was 31 point we got 31 point uh 31.5 here right so all this you take the percentage of nci which was what 20 percent so basically that should give us how much let me remove this so that you can clearly see it this is what you're saying profit for the whole year we need the portion of when you acquired it that is post acquisition which is 9 over 12 there's a component of UPS which you need to deduct and also the depreciation that you're supposed to deduct which you already deducted it that's why you're deducting it here then you determine the percentage of the percentage of NCI so we are talking of 2152 times 9 over 12 minus 10 minus 31.5 times 0.2 in that case I'm getting 314 314.5 so that as at the end of the day my good students you can say that profit for the year will be how much 3997.5 minus 775.2 minus 40 minus 314.5 in that case you're seeing that I'm having 3997.5 plus 755.2 right minus 40 minus 314 minus uh 314.5 so i'm getting a figure of 4398 that's what Malim is getting 43 98.2 43 98.2 that will be our profit for the year as simple as that profit for the year as simple as that so you're done with the first bit you'll find that direct entries you have so many direct entries here distribution cost uh we having aspect of uh so many direct entries at that point so many direct entries at that point we having them there mm -hmm. 
So once we have determined that, I think we can now proceed to the next question where we are required to compute what? Check out what are we required to compute here the next bit? Mm -hmm. So believing that you guys have already downloaded the question. The next bit, uh, we are required to compute our statement of changes in equity. Statement of changes in equity, which basically that should be very, very simple. Basically that one will be very, very simple. So statement of changes in equity, you need to recall what Mwalimu had given us when we started. You need to recall what Mwalimu had shared with us when we started, where in this case, I'll be having this in mind. Mm -hmm. Retain profit. Retained profit. Retained profit. We start with the retained earnings. We start with, of course, uh, changes of changes in equity. We start with the one for retained profit or uh, earnings. We start with the one for parent to be reported. We'll just take the reported retained earnings. We are going to add share of post acquisition, share of post acquisition profit. That is for in our subsidiary, subsidiary and in our associate. Then you take impairment loss attributable to the parent, impairment loss, attributable to the parent, as easy as that. What were we given as retained profit, retained earnings? How much were we given as our retained earnings? Check A limited retained earnings, check A limited retained earnings, which you are given there to be how much? That is a uh, retained earnings. I was given uh, 8237. I believe you can clearly see that 8237 being our retained earnings, being our retained earnings, right? 8237. So I'll be having here 8237. What is the share of post acquisition profit in our subsidiary? That will be simple. That will be simple because I think we had already computed this. So what we are going to take, I'll be taking our amount here. You see this one, the one that we had computed for post acquisition of our NCI. The same concept we are going to have it here, which is basically 21.52 by nine over 12. Give us 16.14 ideally. So 16.14 will less 10, will less 31.5. We take the share of parent, which was 80%. So 16.14 minus 10 minus 31.5 times 0.8 to give us 12.58. Profit in associate, we had already computed it here, 755.2. Recall this one, the share of profit in associate, right? Post acquisition. Then impairment loss, we have already computed impairment loss for the parent, we have 40. So impairment loss, I'll need to deduct the 40. So that as at the end of the day, what will we be having? 8237 plus 1258 plus 755.2 minus 40 to give us 10 to 
to give us 10, 210.2. So in our SAP, retain earnings for a parent or A, I'll be having the 10 to 10.2. Proceed to NCI, the value of NCI to be reported. NCI to be reported in SAP. The same concept will apply, my good students, where we are going to take our value of NCI, the value of NCI, the one that we have used, then we take a share of post acquisition profit, post acquisition profit. Then we less any impairment loss attributable to NCI impairment loss. The fair value that we had used, it was it. 800 plus 50, recall, right? Which gave us 850. Share of post acquisition, already I'm having it here, 314.5. Impairment loss, the total impairment loss, we had it as 45 times the percentage of NCI, which is 20%, which would give us how much? 45 times 0.2 to give us nine which we need to deduct. So the value to be reported, NCI to be reported in our SAP, that will be simple, 850 plus 314.5 minus nine to give us 1155.5, right? We also had associate. So I'm having in a, uh, as investment in associate to be reported, investment in associate to be reported, to be reported, to be reported in SAP. Where in this case, again, I'll be having the investment in associate We are going to take the share of our post acquisition. Share of parent, share of profit attributable to parent, to parent. Then you less any impairment loss if we had any impairment loss. Imagine these things are always as simple as that. I you know a person will be like, Molimu, what is this method that you're using? We've not used anywhere cost of control account. What is happening, Molimu? You should be very smart in handling your work, right? You should be very smart in handling your work. So investment in associate, how much are we given? Let us see how much are we given investment in associate. Not one, we are given 700, right? So I'm having 700 investment in associate, 700. So that's what we'll be taking, 700 here. Share of profit to parent, we had already computed here. That was uh, 755.2. Impairment loss. We saw that in this case, we had a figure of what? Was it four, right? Four. So that as at the end of the day, what would you be having? 700 plus 755.2 minus four to give us 1451.2. 1451.2. 1451.2. So that is our investment in associate to be reported in our SFP. Great. Once you have determined that, I think the next thing that has remained, which you guys can also do, 
is for us to prepare our statement of financial position msema msema kweli right so uh, having this case i believe that uh, you have mastered the steps up to that point now the final bit of course uh, we were asked to prepare our sfp statement of financial position statement of financial position statement of financial position that's the next item that we are supposed to prepare here so let me to erase this point we have our statement of financial position you find that uh, these things are always as simple as that by the way more so on computation of uh, these bits uh you'll find that uh, and i know these are where the challenge is usually these are where majority of the students normally tend to find the challenge on goodwill and on retain earnings but i believe we've solved that today so now about a limited you're having uh, a limited here consolidated statement of financial position consolidated uh statement of financial position of course as that thirtieth september twenty twenty two so as always it is about a matter of copying and pasting. As always, it is about a matter of us just copying and pasting. So how will we do that? We are starting with our current assets. Our current assets. PPE, property, plant, and equipment. Add them on a line-by-line -line basis. PPE, property, plant, and equipment. We add them on a line-by-line -line basis. We add them on a line-by-line -line basis. At this point, I uh, believe you have the paper or you want me to share the paper. We can do that. Let's add them on a line by line basis. A matter of us copying and pasting. We come to our PPE and current asset, right? And current asset, and current asset, right? So we have this. So basically, these are what we are having. Yeah, the non current assets. We can have it there, and uh, we add them on a line by line basis as simple as that so basically at this point uh, we come and add them on a line by line basis that is of course the first one we are having uh we are talking of uh add them on a line by line basis so ppe i'm having 1686 right we add uh, 4855 Mm -hmm. Then after that case, my good students, consider the items that uh, we adjusted with the fair value adjust, not fair value, but valuation, which we had uh, 210. There was a depreciation that was supposed to deduct, but I hadn't deducted it 31.5 because we revalued it in between the year. And the whole depreciation for the whole year was 42. And recall what we are determining that, right? But it was for the whole year, about the nine months, because it was revalued, or we realized that on 1st January. So therefore, in that case, if I told you to talk of our PPE, 1696 plus uh, 4855 plus uh, 210 minus uh, 31.5. So you are getting a figure of how much, my good students, like Molimo, 11, 129.5. Eleven one twenty nine point five. Mm -hmm. Another component that uh, we are having here, we had goodwill. What were we having as our goodwill? 
recall you had completed that goodwill goodwill you had completed it to be on 80 then we had an impairment loss of 25 percent so goodwill for 180 minus the impairment loss which we had it to be what 45 basically that should give us how much 180 minus 45 to give us 135 investment in associates investments in associates we have computed it to be how much investment in associates we have it here Recall, we had computed it here. We had already computed it here. You see this one, 1451.2. 1451.2. Then, what was the investment that I was given in our books? What was the investment that I was given in our books? Look at our investment. I was given 4350 and 50 is it telling to what we were given in, in in form of investments because our investments here were as follows we had investment in associate and we had investment in subsidiary in subsidiary how much did we invest in associate we invested how much in associate? We invested a figure of, uh, that was, uh, of course, uh, 700 in associate. That is note number one. And we spent a further of uh, 3430 in subsidiary. If at all, we can sum these two. Is it giving us what we had in our books? Try sum them up. Is it giving us what we had in our books? I'm talking of 700 plus uh, 3430. It's giving me 4130. It's giving me 4130. And what was reported in our books? What did you have in our books? In our books, you can clearly see we had, if you check investments, we had 4350 plus the 50 in subsidiary, which ideally that should give us 4,400. So the difference, our investment in associate and a subsidiary is totaling to 4,130. But the total investment that was reported in our books, the total investment that was reported in our books, we had 4,400. So what will we be having here? I should be talking of 4,130 minus 4400 so clearly you can see that we had other investments other investments of how much to 70. so i'm having other investments here of 270. so that what will you be having in total what will you be having in total if at all there's nothing else to consider what will you be having in total ideally you'll find that at times it's always a very good for us to be always open-minded and identify items that you are given like look at the investments that you're having compare that with uh, what you invested in and that will give you your other investments right the same case we've worked it out here so ideally, we can agree and say that my non-current assets, we should be talking of 11,129.5 plus uh, 135 <coughs> plus 1451.2 plus 270 to give us 12,985.7, 12, right? Come and consider none other to come and consider current assets. Come and consider current assets. A matter of copying and pasting. Current assets. What will we be having as our current assets? The same procedure. Copy paste. Current assets. 
same procedure, you come and copy paste. I share the question so that we can do it together. Current assets, look at inventory. Look at inventory. I'm having inventory accounts receivable and cash. Uh, talk about uh, cash and bank, right? So how much will we be having there? How much will we be having there? So these are what you should be having. The first item I'm having is inventory. Add on a line by line basis, 1460 minus eight, or uh, rather plus 853. Consider any form of UPS that uh, we had completed. Did you have any UPS? Yes, we had a UPS of how much? 10 we had computed, recall. The other item I'm having accounts receivables, which you should always have in mind that this one will be affected by intercompany balances, right? Accounts receivable, I'm having 1880. We add 765. Consider any intercompany balances. Kindly scroll to note number. Check note number five. As a 30 September, A limited old B limited 80, while C limited old A limited 15 million, right? So that is to tell us that I'm having what intercompany sales of that much over. Uh, 80 while C limited old A limited 15 million. Remember, this is an associate. Associate will not affect us here. My only concern will be on the subsidiary. Which subsidiary we owe each other? How much? 80. So I'm going to deduct 80 on both sides, receivables and uh, payables. So I'll be having minus 80 here. You see, yeah, that's this way I'm going to deduct that 80. Minus 80. Uh huh. The other element you have in cash and bank. Cash and bank. We should be having a figure format there. That was a 1224 plus 187, right? 1224 plus 187. We didn't have any cash in transit. If we could be having cash in transit, we could have added it there, but we didn't have any cash in transit. So what would be your total here, my good students? What would be your total? My total here, we should be having 1460 plus 853 minus 10 to give us 2303. 1880 plus 765 minus 80 to give us 2565. 12, 24, plus 187, to give us 14, 11. So that we can see our total assets will be how much? Determine first of all these ones, to give us plus 25, 65, plus 23, 0, 3, 62, 7, 9. So our total assets, we can agree and say that my total assets will be how much here? Our total assets. Take this plus this to give us a figure of format there. Plus 12, 9, 8, 5, 0. 0.7. That should give me 19 264.7. 19 264.7. Okay. Then what about our equity and liabilities? Equity and liabilities. There are figures that are just direct entry here. Ordinary shares. This is a format, ordinary shares, share premium, uh, retained earnings, 
and NCI. These two, you've computed them. NCI is 1155. Already you had computed that one here. 1155.5. Retain earnings. We have computed a retain earnings here. 10 to 10. Point two. 10 to 10 point two. The other elements, we can have them directly. Ordinary shares and share premiums, we can have those directly in our books. We just go to whatever that I was given here. That's a good thing. Those ones are always direct entries. Where in that case, I was given uh, a figure of how much for ordinary shares. Two thousand six hundred and share premium fifteen hundred, right? Two thousand six hundred and uh, fifteen hundred. So that my total equity, we should be having how much as our total equity? Mm -hmm. A matter of copying and pasting. Total equity here. My total equity confidently, we have 2,600 plus 1,500 plus 10 to 10, 10 to 10.2 plus 1155.5. In this case, I can see I'm having uh, 15, 465.7. Mm -hmm. We come and add our liabilities if we had any and current liabilities consider it there i think from now you can clear because everything molimo has done or you say molimo fanya kazi yake non current liabilities did you have any we add them on a line by line basis Consider and current liabilities. Did you have any so that you can add them on a line by line basis? Let us check. We are having loan from bank. Loan from bank. We add on a line by line basis. Loan from bank, we add on a line by line basis, which ideally in this case, we should be talking of how much? That is 650 plus 200. That should give us automatically 850. Then talk about our current liabilities. Copy pasting. Current liabilities. What will you be having as our current liabilities? We are having on a line by line basis again, trade payables. Trade payables we had 1463.646. Then intercompany balances, which you deducted earlier on, which was what? 80. Then I'm having again our current tax. Current tax. Line by line basis, 560 plus 360. So what will you be having in total? What will you be having in total? You realize that uh, in your SAP, majority of the entries are direct. Like from PPE, uh, talk about other investments you can get, inventory, account, cash, ordinary share premium. These are direct entries, trade, payables, current, loan from bank. Direct entries that you can scoop max. If at all you are located 10 max, you can get up to 7 max. So you have in 1463 plus 646 minus 80, 2029. 
560 plus 360, 920. So what will be our equity and liabilities? Equity and liabilities, what will we be having here? Total. Total equity and liabilities. Total equity and liabilities. Eight fifty plus twenty twenty nine plus answer to give us here yeah, plus uh, fifteen four sixty five point seven to give us nineteen two sixty four nineteen two sixty four point seven right which we have it as the same as our total assets. So you'll find that uh, this question for consolidation, the good thing is that uh, we've started uh, from the scratch and uh, we've looked at uh, everything that will be required to know here. Rarely you'll find that what we've not covered, it, uh, uh, rarely you'll find that for consolidation. Uh, we've covered, remember this point, it has combined both associate, we have a subsidiary and the parent. And those are the main things that you can always be tested. Joint is always as easy as associate. Nothing much on that. So that point, guys, thank you so much. We can meet in our next class whereby we'll be handling other questions, right? Whereby we'll be handling other questions. Till our revision is on, you can always subscribe for our revision package at any given point in time. To this point, guys, thank you so much. And may we see each other in the next class. Thank you.